The Box Seat, brought to you by our stable of sponsors. Hi everyone, welcome to this edition of your box seat. Yes, a very special edition. It is IRT New Zealand Cup Week and Cup Day is right on our doorstep. Michael Guerin, thanks so much for your time building into this year's Cup. I don't know that there's been so many avenues and ways for horses to get to this great race, but gee, it's close now. It is, Greg. Big hi to you. Big hi to everybody around New Zealand, around Australia even if you're further afield watching this on YouTube. It's great to have your company because we have a very special day on Tuesday where we all get back together, some via the television, some, of course, will be on track. Great to have our Australian friends here, Greg. They add such an element to have a defending champion, to have the first ever winner of the race by Grins here, and Greg, a three-year-old. It is a beautifully balanced IRT New Zealand Cup. And one of the great things about it, unlike recent years, Greg, we don't quite know what's going to happen. We'll see if we can find out inside the next hour or so. Yeah, we'll get right into it. Plenty of interviews for you, a lot of information, including this. This is your IRT New Zealand Cup Day. 13 races underway, 12 o'clock. $20,000 first fours in every race. A $100,000 terminating pick six, which is actually run on races six through 11, finishing on the $600,000 IRT New Zealand Cup, which goes at 5.36. Let's start with the market for the great race. The 119th running and the defending champion is the favourite. Copy that. $3.80 currently. Well in the market. Self-assured. The 2020 winner at $8. $6.57 for a cooter. Spank him. The Miracle Mile winner around $9. Old Town Road drifting out slightly. And then off the second row, uh, the early favourite, or one of the early favourites, Rock and Roll Do who was around $5. But let's go back to last year. Remind us of what Copy That achieved. He beats Rafe Rivals again this year in South Coast Arden and Self Assured. On the other side, we'll hear from Ray Green and, of course, the driver of Copy That, Blair Orange. Copy That Cup, though. Chew up, ladies. He's done it. Copy That won the New Zealand Cup by two and a half on Self Assured. South Coast started and runs third, and still the show ran the race of his life. I suppose from this point of view, it's nice to be here with him. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, it was It was hard not not being down here. Mind you, I was, I was pretty confident with Ken, you know, um, so I wasn't worried as such, but yeah, it was still hard. Different preparation for him, Ray. Let's go back to his injury and the time he spent in the box and the reason that you've had to get the miles into his legs. Um, yeah, he had, he broke a spine splint bone. Um, it didn't require surgery, which was good. So it was just, had to heal naturally. So it required him to be uh, locked up in a box for four months. And then there was just a little bit of light treadmill work after that. <coughs> so consequently, he lost all that that hard conditioning that he'd built up over time. So, you know, you you can't just get that back straight away. So we needed to to get racing, and um, and here we are. Yeah. He's had a long grounding in terms of that. Couple of long back marks to come off where. He couldn't but have pleased you with those performances. Yeah, his last two races um, have been really good. And it, it, more importantly, he's pulled up good from them. <laughs> the um, last start, particularly... Uh, <laughs> stop it, come on. Last start, he was particularly... Um, it was a tough run. <laughs> and uh, he, he knew he'd had a race. Um, but he's, he's recovered this morning, he felt super, so he's, he's picked up already. Barrier eight again. Let's hope it's a bit of deja vu. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, luck's the name of the game, isn't it? And um, um, as far as he's concerned, I think he's on his game. I think he'll go well. Um, but I, we do need a little bit of luck as to the, as the 
Thanks everybody. Hey, come on. Could you say that he's in better form than he was last year, or is he in a similar vein? Um, he's in a similar vein of uh, form. I'd say, if anything, he's he's grown a bit. He's he's much stronger individual. He's much much more muscular than he was last time. So he has matured a bit in that regard. So um, he should be he should be good to go. Same barrier, hopefully it's deja vu. Yeah, that'd be nice, mate. Uh, yeah, ideally drawn out there, just a bit wider on the track, and you know, you don't have to really have that early early muster early if you're sort of drawn one to four, so yeah, couldn't, couldn't wish for a better marble. The feel he gave you at Alexandra Park, does that lift your confidence even more now that he's already won a New Zealand Cup and, and now he's can do it from anywhere in the field? Yeah, he's pretty versatile, Greg. He, he doesn't have to be in front. So, uh, yeah, that, that run in Auckland when I went up and drove him, um, I think I said to yourself um, after the run, uh, I haven't driven a horse for a long, long time. That gave me the feel he did. So, uh, yeah, confidence level is very high. Who do you fear? Um, missing away for, for, for one. But, no, nah, there's a few in there. Obviously, it's a, a more depth cup race than it's been in, in past years. So there's at least six to eight winning chances. Um, yeah, but... I think um, they'd fear me a little bit. In terms of the potential of winning three cups in four years, that's almost Todd Mitchell-like. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, I've been pretty lucky, pretty fortunate. So uh, yeah, these are the races we we get up for, and uh, you know I'm just lucky enough to have a drive on on a leading competitor. So great to get that inside from both Ray Green, a squealing copy that, and of course Blair Orange. Michael Guerin, he deserves to be favourite for this race. His last two performances have been nothing short of outstanding, and as Ray just told us, hard to argue that he's not in at least as good, if not better form. He'll need to be, Greg. It's a significantly stronger cup field this year. The first three from the cup last year were good. The rest of them have struggled to win an open class race between them. So it's a lot, lot stronger. But a lot of similarities, barrier eight both years. If he can step, and often they step better from out wide, and get across to the lead, and that's where those recent wins have helped. They'll get him that respect back. He lost in Australia. We'll get to that in a second. If he gets to the lead, Greg, and he comes home in 54 and a half seconds, as he did last year, then he'll probably win again. The problem is this year there may be more pressure. Is Copy that ready to cop that? Well, Greg, since he won the Cup last year, most of his victories have been coming from off the speed because of the handicaps. So he does have options, Blair Orange, the Premiership winning driver. He can stay in front if he gets there or he can trail a rock and roll do type horse if the pressure is strong enough. The key factor for copy that is this. We go, great, he can do that. He can win off 70 metres in an incredibly quick 316 amended time at Cambridge, smashing the New Zealand record by 1.7 seconds. But what do we make of Australia? What do we make of Victoria? Since the Cup last year, he's not only broken the leg and recovered, which takes courage, but he's had nine starts. Five starts in Australia, one win, four misses, and some of them quite bad, Greg. In New Zealand, since the Cup, four starts, three wins, and a second to Old Town Road when giving him a 20-metre start, only beaten by a neck. Some horses don't like being in certain states, certain weather patterns, certain tracks, certain ways of racing styles. Copy that in New Zealand is a vastly different copy that to copy that in Australia. If we wash that away, if we take all that away and look at copy that New Zealand, Greg, copy that New Zealand deserves to be favourite for this race. He's the horse to beat, particularly if he gets to the lead, because here in the last two years, he has barely gone a bad race. In fact, Greg, one of the few times he's missed a place in the last two years here was when left at the start, drawn the inside here two years ago. Outside barrier, best driver in the country, plus, 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 and we know he's back in his best form. He's the horse to beat on Tuesday. Yep, no question about that at all. Couple that will be looking to take the title off him from Australia. Uh, of course, Majestic Cruiser and Rock and Roll do. Here's Majestic Cruiser beating Self Assured in the race that is such a key lead up to so many New Zealand Cups. The Messenger Championship on the other side. We'll hear from Majestic Cruiser's 
trainer and Jason Grimson find out where the horse is at in his mind. Up on the outside, storms to self-assured, and it's an Australian messenger win, and a majestic cruiser gets it, Cam Hart. Well, welcome back to New Zealand, mate. A happy hunting ground last time. Yeah, definitely. It was a good time last time. Um, it's good to be here. The weather's good, so hopefully we have a good trip. When did this come on the radar? When was the New Zealand Cup the next race for Majestic Cruiser? Uh, probably after the Blacks are fake, you know. We sort of skipped the Vic Cup, hoping to get over here and race in this race just before the Inner Dominion. Uh, yeah. All right, in terms of a preparation for a New Zealand Cup, it's certainly unique. Where are you at in your own mind with where Majestic Cruiser is fitness-wise? Is he exactly where you need him to be? Yeah, I'm quite confident with him, just where his fitness level is at. His last two runs probably haven't been the best, to the best of his ability, but um, I said this morning coming back in to Mark Jones, he feels awesome, so he should run accordingly, and he, he looks great, feels good, so that's all we need from him. We know he's a great star. The 3,200 metres of the New Zealand Cup should be right up his alley. What about the opposition? What do you make of them? Uh, obviously, it's quite a close cup, you know. All the ones I've watched and seen, there's sort of been one or two standouts, but there's probably six or seven horses that can win it. And um, if he gets the right trip and he feels good in the run, I'm sure he'll run a good race. Jace, where does it sit, the New Zealand Cup and the, the sphere of harness racing in Australasia? What would it mean to you to be able to, to grab this title? You've already won an Inter Dominion after all. Uh, yeah, it's definitely on my bucket list. Um, it's obviously the biggest race over here, and uh, it's one that you want to win. It's obviously quite hard, considering we don't have the standing starts in Australia, but I do like a challenge, and I think that I can win it. Spoke to Jason Grimson this morning. He took Majestic Cruiser Michael into Addington Raceway yesterday. Gave him a spin around, showed him all the marquees and the tents. I said, what was he like from the stand? He said, I stood him up two or three times, threw the reins at him. He said, I reckon he's a quicker beginner from a stand than he is from the mobile. So he's very confident that he'll step away. He said 14 starts for Jason Grimson over longer than 2,200. One seven of them, including that messenger, of course, and the blacks are fake. He's an outstanding stayer, this horse. Yeah, he is. And tempo's the key here, Greg, because I don't see him stepping into the first three or four because it's not what he actually does most of the times in his life. So say we put him midfield, put him neutral, midfield. Can he run past copy that and probably rock and roll do, who's going to come around and sit parked or close enough to park? Yeah, he can, but he's going to want them coming home in 56 seconds rather than 54 and a half because it's incredibly hard to come home wide quicker than that. So tempo's the key. If they go really, really fast and really hard, as they did in the messenger, he can come over the top of them. If there's no tempo mid-race, I don't think he can move and be a factor. So yes, he can win, Greg, but you might be a case where at the 800 metre mark, you know your fate with Majestic Cruiser. Let's go back to uh, last Monday. Kaikoura again, another key lead-up race. Uh, here's Kango in front of Akuta, Pembroke Playboy getting to the inside. We're going to hear from Arna Donnelly and Mark Purden, all importantly about his three runners post-race. Playboy and Kango from Akuta through the middle, All-American lover. Kango's rallying along the inside, Pembroke Playboy, but it's Kango's Kaikoura Cup. Kango won it from Pembroke Playboy and Akuta. A winning preparation going into a New Zealand Cup, perfect from a training point of view. Yeah, really good. Um, took a bit of pressure off, that's for sure, but uh, yeah, good drive, great drive by David and um, good effort from the horse too. Tell me, Anna, how's he come through that? He, he looks bright to the eye and, and, and what sort of work have you done with him this week since? Not a lot. No, he hasn't done a lot. Um, he's come through it really well. He ate up that night and put him out in the paddock the next day and he, was, he took off running and having a buck and that. So um, he's, he's really well, actually. I haven't done a lot with him. He had a candor this morning. He's going to have a hobble tomorrow morning. So, uh, but he seems very well. Wide front row draw in a New Zealand Cup. Were you happy with that? Yeah, probably when I first saw it, maybe not. But um, since talking to a few, I think I am actually quite happy to be out there, to be fair. What's it like now for you, having been through this sort of preparation before and having experience in big races now? Does it get any easier? Oh, yeah, like probably a bit more pressure this year because we've got a lot of crowd. Last year was COVID, there was no one around, so it was pretty um, laid back. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's going to be good. It's really exciting. It's just, uh, it's just great to be there.
What are your expectations this year? Last year you were happy to be there. Are you thinking that he's a genuine top four chance? I'll probably go yes to that. Um, like I think if they go hard, he loves the distance. Um, he was very good in the Auckland Cup over the two miles. So, you know, he won't be able to do the work he did the other day. But um, look, it's anyone's race, to be fair. And, you know, we get a good trip. I'm sure he'll be thereabouts. Mark, the decision for Akuta to go round in the Cup was pretty much sealed at Kaipora. Yes, it was, Greg. Yeah, like he did the work early and, and sat outside the leader all the way. And he, he didn't go down by much. And uh, yeah, I, I thought his run was very good. Most importantly, how did he pull up? Very well. Yeah, and that was another part of the reason that uh, we thought we'd go ahead with a cup start. He just seemed so well, and I actually thought going into it that there's more improvement in him, and uh, hopefully, hopefully there is. What about barrier draw-wise? Is three acceptable? I suppose it has to be. Oh, yes, yeah, three's a great draw. You know, uh, very happy with that, and uh, he's been good from a stand. He begins been beginning safely and well, so, uh, you know, he's probably not going to be sort of in vying for positions, you'll probably be able to slot somewhere handy early from the start. Alright, what does he need, run-wise, to be able to win the IRT New Zealand Cup? I think, gauging by the field, it's going to be a true run race. And I think there's runners there that are capable of making their own luck and making a move. So, uh, you know, you, you just wouldn't want to be too far off the pace by the time you got into that last half, I wouldn't think. Alright, two other charges, self-assured. What do you make of barrier one for him? Look, his standing start manners have been good, um, you know, for a good while now. So uh, he, he lines up there. He's, you know, that nonsense of going up and down in the one spot. He's sort of gone away from that, and uh, he's been pretty genuine from the start. So I'd envisage he'd get away. He's got to be reasonably quick just to take a handy spot. Otherwise, he's got that risk of getting shuffled back. But. Uh, you know, I expect him to make a, a safe beginning and, and um, you know, Tony and the bike, if he can get him away a bit quicker, well, it'll be a help. Certainly not lacking in horsemanship yeah. there, Mr. Three and a half thousand and spank him. I'm not going to say he's in career best form, but I'll tell you what, he looks in the zone. Yeah, well, I, I think he's close to career best form the way he seems and uh, really, pl well, really impressed with his work on Wednesday at Addington and the way he got to the line, he looked really strong and, and that was through with him too. And the barrier's perfect for him, he's a good standing start exponent. Yes, yes, he's just a genuine, you know, racehorse and uh, he'll begin quick and, and, you know, he'll probably be handy, I'd say, right from the start. So great to get that inside. Firstly there from Anna Donnelly and uh, the big horse can go. He's drawn wide out on the track. She's very confident where he's at. Uh, Mark Purden's comments there, Michael. Obviously to put a cooter in the race, he's very pleased with where he's at. He's really happy with the barrier of 3-2. Uh, he realises that he's going to need the right run to win the race, but he thinks he's got the horse in tip-top order. He's not so sure about self-assured. He is a lot more confident about him stepping away than what he has been perhaps in the last couple of years. And Spankham is in the zone. We'll start on Spankham. He's had plenty of chances to win a cup and weaker cups than this. I'll be stunned if he wins. Won't be stunned if he runs top three because that's who he is. But he should have won an Auckland Cup, had a chance to win a New Zealand Cup. I think two miles is just a step too far for him. Still, he's in great nick. Self-assured, it's a weird one because Mark's comments carry so much weight as does the disappointing Ashburton performance. Apparently the spring allergies reduce him by 10% on what he can usually be. He was still good enough to run second in the Cup last year, but again, a weaker Cup. I think tucked away on the markers, trail three deep, yes, he can win, but it's so hard to win here unless you're absolutely full of yourself, and we have to take Mark at his word that self-assured isn't, and of course, the driver choices. They had the choice to stick with, or Natalie did, with this horse. She's chosen to stick with Spankham. Then we get to Akuta. I've never seen anything from Akuta Greg to suggest he can beat all these horses yet. We know it's in the tank, we just haven't seen him take it out for a spin. If he's sitting three back on the outside, sure he can win a cup, but I'm just not sure whether he can run past all of these horses, and I definitely don't think he can step to the lead, and if he did, I think he'd get pressured. When I go back a couple of starts, when he was fat Akuta, uh, and he was beaten by Republican Party and couldn't run past the three-year-olds, I can't back him to win a New Zealand Cup. In saying that, maybe his peak performance 
is going to be coming up on Tuesday. For me, of the horses we just discussed, uh, Kango's a factor early doors. He may well step better from out at Barrier 10. Self assured is the one who's proven it, Greg. He's won this race, the Auckland Cup, and the race by Grins. In fact, two Auckland Cups. He's proven it to me, so he's my top pick out of those four, but I do have those doubts around those spring allergies. Let's go to the cup trial from Wednesday. Only three in it. Uh, the start was important. Krug missed away. Rock and roll dude didn't. He stepped beautifully. Plug stay in here. Home in 54. Old Town Road to his outside. We get to hear from Mick Stanley, trainer driver of Rock and Roll Do, and from Zachary Butcher, who gets a chance to steer the lightly tried Old Town Road. Rock and roll do, rock and roll do the inside and Old Town Road, rock and roll do, he'll tango his way this time, but in six days the best horse will win. Well the talking's just about all done. Yeah we're getting closer, um, been a long build up, we've been here for a while and um, but yeah now we can uh, we can really start to feel the excitement as we get closer. How did Hendo come through the trial? Yeah super. Um, yeah, came uh, back here and, and cleaned his bin up and uh, he's been really bright and, and bouncing around since, so um, couldn't be happier. Your dad, Ian, who's been such a big part of your mentorship, if you like, in, in this harness racing game, uh, arrives this weekend. How special to have him sharing this moment with you? Yeah, it will be. Um, as you know, you, you know a lot of the, the harness racing families, you're born and that into it. So, um, you know, we've been through a, a long journey in the sport together and, um, you know, a lot of the times when we travel horses uh, back home, Dad's the one that does the travelling. So, um, you know, it'd be only fitting to... Uh, you know, get him over here and uh, be a part of it. Mick, I know how special it was for you winning your home cup, your Victoria Cup, but when you've travelled a horse to another country and you're lining up in, in their cup, it's almost next level. Yeah, it is. I think that's when you travel anywhere, um, you know, even need to stay back home. When, when you step into someone else's territory, um, you know, everyone's been fantastic and, and uh, been really welcoming but I, I'm sure on race day they won't be wanting me to win. So, um, it, yeah, so it does. It takes it to a whole new level. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be doing our best to, to win the race. And it, you're right, you, to travel overseas and experience what we've ex experienced, to, uh, if we are fortunate enough to pull it off, it would be very special. You haven't driven Addington a lot. In fact, going around at the trials the other day would have been an experience for you, I'm sure. Um, are you watching videos? Are you taking advice? What, what do you do to prepare for a race like this? Um, I, I reckon the advice from the from the locals I have to be very wary of because they might be trying to throw me off. But uh, no, I watch a lot of uh, New Zealand Cup replays. Um, you know, going back for uh, you know the last uh, decade especially. So um, yeah, done a lot of homework that way. And 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 while you don't want to read a lot into those because you still want to drive your own race and have your own plan. It, it is really important to um, get get somewhat of a guide to, to how the races are run and you know what you know where winners come from with different tempos and, and the like. So um, yeah, we have done a lot of homework that way. So um, yeah, hopefully uh, it benefits us on the day. Who do you fear, if any, in the race? Oh, of course, in these races you fear everyone. Um, you know, so you know the the copy of that is obviously an outstanding. Uh, uh, two mile, he's won the cup before, self assured's won the cup before. Um, you know, Spankham's a, a Grand Circuit champion. Um, yeah, and then you've got a lot of up and comers, you know, Old Town Road, Betty Joe, um, Akuda. So uh, there's a lot in the race to fear. Um, but we just have to be confident um, in our preparation, confident in our horse, and then hope that we get a, a safe passage on the day. Few ticks there, mate. Yeah, pretty happy. Step good again today. Uh, it's a little bit of a funny race in it. There's only three in it, so it's hard to get a line. But the times were nice. The last half was pretty slick. And look, I, I come out sort of, you know, he was going to win it and win it nicely, and he just blew out that last hundred. Um, rock and roll do come back and got us. But I think John talking to him after, he's pretty happy that was his last, you know, decent blowout to to really bring him on for Cup Day. So yeah, we're pretty happy. Wide front row draw. Is that what you were hoping for? Yep. I think you know he's it's a big big day for him uh, yeah he, he sort of was his eyes poking out of his head around Ash Burden so you're gonna have all those marquees a lot of noise a lot of people uh, so the outside he's got plenty of time just to cruise up and uh, you know keep him relaxed we don't really want to be standing too long and that gives him his chance to, to make a clean getaway and obviously those ones inside him they're season campaigners they, they've proven that they step every time you know so like if we can just slot across and get a good spot um, 
I still believe he's got the speed. You know, he ran a quick half today. We just just need that little bit of luck in the running, and um, he should be right there. Is that the key to him this year? Getting him in the right spot where he's close enough to unleash. Yeah, I think so. For me, you know, that'll be start 13. You know, not many will go into that that sort of race and loop around the field and put pay to them. You know, so there'll be a few moves at the mile I'm picking. Um, uh, you just get on the right one. The right one's back at the right time. The good thing is there's enough horses in there. You know, they've all earned their place. That they're going to get you to probably where you need to be if you're in the right spot at the right time. So we'll be looking to do that at some point uh, in the running there and. Like I said, uh, if we can just, if we're thereabouts over two miles, so relaxed he should, should be running home really good late. Pretty special day for your family. You drive out there with your brother and with your father for the first time in the ultimate race. Um, yeah, there'll, there'll be a lot of people smiling, including a couple that are no longer with us too. Yeah, 100%. It's a, um, it's a pretty proud moment, like you say, pop, both me pops. Uh, yeah. It's pretty cool to, to be able to do it. Obviously, you know, this era in racing, it's hard just to get a drive in that cup regardless and for... Um, all three of us to be to be lucky enough to be honest with you. You know, you've got to be lucky. Uh, we've had a lot of support, you know, by the right people. So we'll get out there and don't get, don't get me wrong. Once we get on that track, there'll be uh, there'll be no smiles. I'll be um, making sure I do everything I can to beat them. But I'm sure afterwards we'll have a couple of quiet bears reminisce and um, just take in what it all all was and enjoy the day. You know. Michael, there are so many different storylines around this cup. Uh, Mick Stanley coming, of course, he was mentored by the late Gavin Lang, and uh, I know Gavin would give him great confidence going into this race. I'm sure he'll do the right thing, and he's wrapped with where his horse is at, and his father Ian's come over, and that is going to experience something pretty special on Tuesday. And then there's the butcher story, and what it means to Zachary, to Benjamin, to their father David, and their wider family, and the wider Cambridge community, because um, it's an occasion that the Butcher family, uh, I'm sure, are going to embrace. It's an incredible occasion for a father to have two sons all driving in the same race, and, and Zach and his father standing next to each other in the sulkies at the start. It'll be remarkable footage. Um, Old, Old Town Road first. Can win because Ashburton was another step up, and when horses keep taking steps, you don't know they're finished taking steps. I think he'll need to be driven quietly and hope for tempo and hope to swoop on top of them. But his cup trial was every bit as good as rock and roll do. So, yes, he can win for formerly retired trainer John Dickey. What a remarkable story it would be. Josh Dickey, who lives in Australia now, former driver of this horse, is now back to watch the race as a part owner. Rock and roll do, though, is the big noise because he's been outstanding this spring. He was a good horse last year, but he, uh, last season when he won the Pale Face Adios. I think the big track suits him, Greg. When you go back through his starts on sizeable tracks, races like the Pale Face Adios at Menangle, like the Kilmore Cup, he runs through the line very strongly on the big tracks because he, he gets warmed up and he just keeps going and going and going. But it's not slow, it's not a rolling just speed. He's got fast speed. He's run home in 26 seconds at the end of these races sitting parked. His Victorian Cup effort was crushing. And if that version turns up, and we take Mick Stanley at his word that he's getting to that level of fitness, then he can win. The one concern is, Greg, he may have to sit parked to win, and not many horses sit parked to win New Zealand Cups. He's one who can potentially do it. And I see a scenario, there's many scenarios, this is my most likely one. Copy that's in front with a lap to go and Rock and Roll Do's outside him. And Rock and Roll Do might outstay Copy That, they've met twice, he's beaten them both times, but that was the Australian version of Copy That, or Copy That Light as we call it. Can he beat him sitting parked outside him? Yes, will he? I think it depends on whether they roll home in 54 or 55 and a half. So, Greg, the other two big factors in the race for me, I think Rock and Roll Do is as good an Australian horse for this race as I've seen in my time in harness racing. So it's, um, it's intriguing, that trans-Tasman battle among all those other battles. And then, Greg, I suppose we get to the training and premiership leaders because Team Telfer have two horses in the race, two horses they probably thought could win, right up until the barrier draw on Wednesday, Greg. BD Joe, we see here winning the Ashburton Flying Stakes, not well treated in the barrier draw, Gregory. 
No, absolutely not. Alongside his stablemate, Alter Wise Guy, who's getting through on the inside there of Pembroke Playboy. But it's hard to argue that BD Joe isn't the most improved horse in New Zealand. He's going to have to do something completely different as Old Town Row storms home there. He's going to have to work in the race. He's going to have to make a move. And there are a few that are going to do that with him. Rock and Roll Do being the most logical one off the second row. But for Benjamin Butcher, he's had a drive in the cup before. He gets another opportunity. And uh, I'm sure he'll take it uh, with both hands. And I'm sure the horse will uh, race accordingly. We'll get to our selection shortly. But we've got some special guests on the show today. One of them has won four New Zealand Cups as a trainer or co-trainer, Barry Purden, with his thoughts on this year's IRT New Zealand Cup. Hi everyone, it's uh, Barry Purden here. Uh, my pick in the Cup is uh, Majestic Cruiser. I was really impressed with him, he came over for the race. Uh, he ran a great second to self assure and then through, on his third start here he, uh, he won, the New Zealand, uh, won the Messenger at Auckland, beating self assured in a 155 mile race. Uh, he's a good staying horse. Uh, I just hope he can get away cleanly. Uh, there's some good beginners there, especially the South Island horses, so they can get up to top speed really quick. So he'll want to step away good. Uh, there's some great chances. Self Assured's got to be in there. Uh, copy that, of course, last year's winner. Old Town Road got home great at uh, Ashburton. And uh, just a shame BD Joe's were on the second line. But uh, a great field. I'd just like to wish all the connections all the best. Hope you have no bad luck in the running, and good luck. Yeah, brilliant to have Barry Purden's insight into this year's Cup. We go from him to a young man having an opportunity to drive in the great race for the first time. Carter Dalgetty drives Krug. We've got a chance to have a chat to him about what it's going to be like building into the great race. Carter, for most people, it's a dream to have a drive in New Zealand Cup, but in your first full season of driving, to have a drive in it would almost seem, well, unfathomable. Yeah, you're exactly right. I remember thinking a couple of years ago it'd be unbelievable to drive in this race, but to think I can do it with a horse, uh, my favourite horse and a horse that I've been with for a couple of years now, it's it's all come up very quickly, but yeah, it's pretty surreal. Tell me a bit more about Krug and, and how this relationship that you do have with him has developed over the last couple of years. Yeah, it started probably very young, right at the yearling sales, and obviously he wasn't a cheap buy, but I remember very clearly sitting next to Dad in the auction ring and he was on his last bid and it wasn't our bid and I was giving him the elbow, one more, one more, and, and that was it. And that's where it really started, um, me and his connection. And it obviously it's turned out to be a pretty good story because he's, he's been a super horse for us, a great two-year-old and a great three-year-old. And uh, probably the travel has probably brought us together even more, going over to Australia with each other and Auckland and everything like that. It's it's things like that when you're together for a long time and it's just you two, you, you really get to bond. You've grown up, spent your whole life here at Kentuckiana Lodge. Your dad's had plenty of cup runners before. He hasn't had a cup winner, so it's it's going to be pretty special for both of you. Oh, absolutely. He's, he's come close a couple of times, had some great horses, but, yeah, it's one race. I don't know if he'll retire and, unless he wins one, so we'll be trying pretty hard next Tuesday. And, like, for any young Canterbury boy growing up or any New Zealand harness boy, it's just the race you really want to win. You're going to have a unique build up to it though because you're currently studying and you've got an exam on Cup Day morning. Um, that starts at 9 o'clock, do you think you'll get finished in time so you can get to the track? <laughs> yeah, well I'm hoping so, um, I'm going to have to turn my brain right on and, and turn the horse, horses off for a couple of hours but um, it might be a slight advantage really, it, it might switch me out of the racing for a bit so I don't psych myself out. but. Yeah, I'll be putting the pen to paper pretty quick, I'd say, on Tuesday. What about advice-wise? I mean, you grew up around here with arguably the best driver in the world at the moment in, in Dexter Dunn. Will you, will you tap into him? I know he didn't win a New Zealand Cup, but I'll tell you what, he's won everything else. Yeah, for sure. Like my Probably my two um, go-to people are my uncle Anthony Butt and Dexter. Um, they'll be the two guys that I'll be speaking to the most just about the day and, and not only the race but just sort of everything around it. I've had a, you know, a few few senior drivers have said to me it's it's just amazing you're walking around at the, at the start and they're singing the national anthem he said they said you'll just feel something you've never felt before so I'm looking forward to it. You lost your grandfather, me old mate Jim, uh, earlier in the year. W what do you reckon, what sort of advice do you think he'd give you and, and we both know how proud he would be that you're having a drive in this great race. Yeah, that's right. He um, 
he's he's one of those guys where he'd say you can do everything you can in the lead up, everything possible, but he said he would say that last five percent it's just in the lap of the gods, you know, things like stepping away and and positioning in the running. So I'm sure he'd just say sit back and enjoy the ride. You're excited. You, you're really looking forward to this opportunity because it's such a rare uh, thing for for a guy under 20 years of age. Oh, I am. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot of things. Really, I'm. To be completely honest, I'm not feeling a lot of pressure. To be honest, I'm. I'm not a real sort of highly strung fella. So, I'm. I'm relaxed. I'm very excited. I, I've. I want to win the race. Most importantly, but yeah, I just want to do the best I can and and don't really want to want to be unlucky out there. Go well on Tuesday. Thank you. Incredible to think what we've been through in the last couple of years, and your company for that matter, but we're at the most favourite time of the year for you, IRT New Zealand Cup Day. Oh, so true, Greg, but, uh, you know, it has been a tough two years for everybody. We put all that behind us, and now we focus on, I think, the greatest race day on the New Zealand racing calendar, and, and Cup Day, IRT New Zealand Cup Day, and just cannot wait for it to, uh, to be here. Um, an incredible field that's been assembled made really interesting by the draws that have obviously come out. Uh, and I think that adds to the excitement in a lot of ways and the intrigue because, you know, there's so many different variations now and so many variables that can take place. So <laughs> I just cannot wait, just thrilled. There's a brilliant article on HRNZ by Michael Guerin about what you'd want in a cup field is what we've got. Oh, totally. I actually did read that article. Um, always Michael's best work. Uh, and it, it, it just, look, at just the intrigue. We've got the Australians that are here for the first time in quite a long time. And, you know, it's just going to be a race, I think, that probably one of 10, 12 horses could win it. And I don't mean that res disrespectfully to some of the others there. But, you know, it's going to be a race that there's going to be no stone left unturned. Um, and we're just thrilled that we're here and that we're part of it. And IRT is just, just over the moon to be a part of this fantastic industry. We really are. Terrific to have IRT involved with the Cup for the last three years and of course they have announced that they will be with the IRT New Zealand Cup for another three years. Uh, very important we get uh, some thoughts around the Australians from one of their own, Michael Guerin catching up with Brittany Graham around this year's Cup. Well Brittany Graham, it's time for five questions with Brit. First one's pretty easy. Are you excited to be getting back to Addington for Cup Day? You can't wait, Michael. Really looking forward to Tuesday. Coming across on Sunday, haven't been for a few years now. I think it was 2014, the last cup that I attended. So I've been to a few as a spectator, but really looking forward to bringing all of the coverage to the Aussies. I know they're very excited for this Tuesday coming. And the fact that we've got two of our own representatives, we'll be beaming all of that straight back into Australia for everybody who can't be there to enjoy but I must say there's a stack of Aussies coming across everybody I've asked basically is heading to Addington so uh, there's going to be a big support crew that's by the sounds of things. Do you think this race because we have rock and roll do and majestic crews are in because it's been a long time since we've had a field of this quality do you think it will resonate with the Australian punters back at home obviously the harness racing ones more so than recent years? Oh, absolutely. I think the last few years have been a struggle from a few different perspectives. We know that probably lead ups have been tricky for a few of the Kiwis. And there's also been, from our viewpoint, very dominant horses over the last few years. I think last year it was either copy that or self assured. We know self assured was able to win before that. But this year, there's so many chances. And as you mentioned, the fact that there are Aussies coming, we got to see Rock and Roll do up close and personal, win the Victoria Cup, the Pride Grand Circuit race to that was the Tab Blacks of Fate going back to July, and that was won by Majestic Cruiser. So the last two Grand Circuit pacing races have been won by these horses that are now going over to New Zealand. So no doubt about that. There's been so much chatter about it. I think people were somewhat surprised. Everybody wants to go, but the fact that they are there, uh, that's great for the race, great for us as those that are going to be viewing it as well. And it's really the race that everybody's talking about at the moment. As much as there's so much going on here, uh, between, I guess, last week's Lensmith Mile and the Inter-Dominion, there isn't a lot of open class racing, so it just fits in perfectly. Britt, nobody's travelled with these horses more than you this year. You came to the race by Grins at Cambridge. You've obviously been for your own Queensland Carnival. You've been there when Rock and Roll Do's won his race. You were in Sydney last week for the Len Smith. 
simple question. You only get one answer. Who's the best horse in Australasia at the moment? Well, I'm very biased, as everybody knows, and I don't even try and hide it. I'm a Queenslander through and through. So I think the best horse is to fame. Now, I'm saying that from a futures perspective. I think you'll be the, the best Grand Circuit horse over the next few years, and what he's been able to do this year has been quite remarkable. So I think he's the best horse, obviously, ladies in red. She's been magnificent, but we don't have a dominant open-class horse this season we've seen the money really evenly spread around and probably if we go back to the miracle mile earlier this year majestic cruiser and also rock and roll dude wouldn't have even been in the conversation for the best horse so it's been a very ever-changing last six months or so but i think this time next year leap to fame will be on the open class stage and he'll be there uh, right at the top as well we're used to sending horses to Australia and having maybe the disadvantage of the travel or the different types of tracks and racing. What's the biggest threat or the biggest concern for the Australian pair this week going to Addington for a 3,200 metre standing start? Well, it's pretty simple for mine. It's just that last uh, phrase that you mentioned, standing start. We we obviously don't have any big time standing start races anymore. I think the Redcliffe Cup and the Tasmanian Cup are the only two Group 1 pacing standing starts left on the calendar. For Rock and Roll Do, there's simply no pacing races, uh, standing start races allowed in Victoria, and there's basically none programmed in New South Wales for Majestic Cruiser. So that is by far and away the biggest challenge for these two horses and we've both well we've seen rock and roll do scramble at Ashburton he was better there in the cup trial and for Benjestic Cruiser he had to stand there with one other horse and walk up and step away from the tape so that is by far and away the biggest challenge we know that they're both great stayers they've had different schedules to get there from a traveling perspective Majestic Cruiser's an old hand at it now and rock and roll do's had plenty of time to settle in so I don't think we'll have those excuses I think it's going to be more so the standing start. I know you love doing your form. I know you've done your form for Tuesday. For the New Zealand viewers or those watching this back home via YouTube or on a keep to the channels over there, what's your top three in the Cup? I know you're dying to give me four, but what's your top three in the IRT New Zealand Cup for Tuesday? To be honest, it'd probably be easier to give you a top six and just hope that one of them were able to... I knew you might say that, but I'm only going to give you three. <laughs> It's such an open race this year and you've mentioned it over the last few weeks. It's been a changing beast, but I've flipped back and forth between copy that and, and Old Town Road. I'm a massive Old Town Road fan. I thought that his Ashburton run was superb and just how quick he is off the tapes, just watching him. He was a real bullet at Ashburton. So uh, from that wide draw, we know there's been plenty of conjecture around those wider runners getting a, a better uh, walk up to the stand. So if he's to get away safely and he's in the firing line, he's probably my bet in the race. But copy that's my on top selection if I was to give you a top three, which is funny because he was probably not at the top of his game in Victoria, which is the last time I saw him, and that was only a month ago. So it's been quite a remarkable turnaround for him. And it's been a remarkable, I guess, stroke of genius from Ray Green to take him to a completely different country to get lead-up races into it. It's been quite remarkable. But I'm with him on top. I think if he steps to the top, which I have him in my map, if you could have a map in a standing start race, I think that he's the most likely leader. So he goes in on top. Overall, Town Road, who I think uh, doesn't necessarily re represent the value because I, I think there's a lot of horses in this race that will go around at big prices that probably are more value. But just at his current price, he's more of a betting proposition for mine. And Rock and Roll do. I'm worried about the draw for him and the standing start in saying that I had a quick chat to uh, Michael Stanley earlier on and he's so happy with this horse. And I know there's a lot of Kiwis that are pretty keen on his chances as well. So that's a big uh, respect push from your side of the ditch. Britt, thanks for taking uh, part in five questions with Brittany Graham. It won't be the last time we see that on the box seat this year. We'll see you and heaps of other Australians at Eddington on Tuesday. Can't wait. And a big thank you to Brittany Graham for coming on our box seat special. What about selections wise? Uh, Michael, I'm with Rock and Roll Do to beat Majestic Cruiser. Copy that, a great chance in the race. And I've found a spot for Akuta. What about you? Copy that on top because I think he'll be in front. Greg but can win the race even if he's not. Rock and Roll Do, extremely hard to beat. Old Town Road, maybe we don't know how good he is. We might find out on Tuesday at 5.36. And Majestic Cruiser has proven he can win 
rock hard group one races. So he is in there. You may have other picks yourself, punters. The great news is the TAB is going to give you plenty of options to make money out of those. A truly fascinating IRT New Zealand Cup. Yeah, plenty of power plays uh, on all of the races, the 13 that we have at Addington. Let's go to one of the other Group 1s, the Woodland Sires Stakes. And, of course, uh, a look at the market. Our favourite, and it is, Don't Stop Dreaming, at around $1.60. Uh, uh, the next in line, betting-wise, Sherlock from the inside. Of course, we've got Merlin from the outside of the second row. has been a shortener into $5.50. Ulta Meteor being kept safe by the book makers as well. We need to go back to the cup trials. Uh, here is Merlin. He's never been beaten, Michael, on race day or at the trials. Here he is uh, getting home and winning this. Seve getting through on the inside of Gandalf, but he's just a winner, Merlin. He's a cartoon character of a horse. His little legs just spin so fast when he gets going. Yes, he can still win from the outside of the second line, Greg, but uh, the problem is Don't Stop Dreaming, who's a comparable horse, maybe as good, maybe a little bit better, maybe a little bit worse, should lead. And if he leads, it's incredibly hard to see how Merlin beats him. So here's some gate speed from Don't Stop Dreaming. And we see here, Greg, he can get off the gate well. That's a huge, huge component to this race. I think he'll lead and I think he'll win. And if Merlin comes and beats him, well, then Merlin must be pretty bloody good. Yeah, absolutely. This is the welcome stakes. This is Don't Stop Dreaming. It was only about start number three for him. But we're going to hear from uh, Mark Purden around the chances of the All-Stars. He and Hayden Cullen with a big advantage numbers wise. And this horse here is a hot favourite. Mark, numerically, you've got advantage again and the barrier has really played your way. Don't Stop Dreaming looks perfectly placed. Yes, yeah, it was a great run from a bad draw last time, Greg, and not an ideal prep going into that race. And, uh, you know, probably he's, he's probably a little bit better since then to, to now. So uh, it's just a perfect draw for him. He has very good early speed. Would you envisage, and it's hard to do in a size stakes final, but... The lead's going to be there for him. He's going to take up all sorts of capture. Yes, yeah, he will. He's a classy individual and, uh, you know, the Barry and Scott's horse from the outside of the second line is going to be working for most of the race and uh, so he's got the advantage there. It'll just, it'll just depend how much early work he does have to do, but uh, providing he, he can sort of cross to the lead and, and doesn't cop too much pressure, he, he's going to be the horse to be. Mark Sherlock's been a big improver in the barn and has drawn to trail you throughout. Is he any chance of being able to run you down? Uh, I wouldn't underrate him, Greg. Um, you know, like his, you know, with his trials and, and his race form, you know, his record's very, very good. So uh, he, he's, a, he's a strong horse, so uh, he's not one I'd underrate sitting on the back. And of course, your other chances, final collect, OK Boomer, Carrera Rapido, we're stolen. They're all very nice horses, but probably not in the league of the other two. Yeah, that's correct. And uh, yeah, so if they had that one draw or two draw, they might have been more of a chance, but they're going to need luck from their barriers. Michael, not hard to find uh, everyone's top selection in the Woodland Sires stakes. It will be Don't Stop Dreaming, and he will be the scariest horse on the day for mine for the bookmakers, multis-wise. Very much so. Um, you know, the All-Stars obviously attract a lot of money regardless, but he's very good. What I liked when he was beaten in the Harness Millie was he was coming again at the line at Merlin. So love Merlin as a horse. One of those two should win, but we're all predicting a lead trail scenario here, Greg. Um, for a very interesting bunch of horses still trying to work out who the absolute best is. If Merlin wins this, Greg, it's him. Yeah, I totally agree uh, there. Third of our Group 1s is the Neverly R Phillies final. Queen of Diamonds uh, has been flying, although she's come up with the inside second row draw. Market-wise, the horse we're not sure about, True Fantasy, is pretty short on, but there has been good support for Queen of Diamonds and also Rakiro Rebel. But let's have a look at Queen of Diamonds in the Neverly R heat down at Ashburton. Great performance from her, Michael, on this occasion. Came from an awkward draw power up and I know you like her a lot on Tuesday. I think True Fantasy is the best horse in the race but I think Queen of Diamonds is probably in better form. Now if True Fantasy runs to the lead she'll probably win but I don't see it being that easy. 
There's a heap of gate speed here, right across the front line, and True Fantasy's not a naturally quick gate speed horse. One on the second line is not good for Queen of Diamonds, but if they all punch off, just visualise this, if they all punch off, I can see her sliding in behind them, Greg, and having options, whether it's to stay there or get off the marker pegs early. I think she's a great bet because of her price versus uh, True Fantasy. Let's see what Mark Purden had to say. Mark, True Fantasy's forms a bit of a mystery for punters. Can you give them some confidence to back the favourite in the Neville R final? Yes, you know, I just don't know whether she's been as good as we have had her. She, she is still very good, and, and I wouldn't say she couldn't win it, but she could win it. But, uh, yeah, probably, you know, in my own mind, I think she's been better. But uh, she's got a good draw, and, and uh, you know, Natalie will give her the right trip, and, and if she's good enough, I'm sure she'll, have, she'll be saluting the judge. Queen of Diamonds doesn't have the best barrier draw, although sometimes it can pan out and she's low flying. Yes, she is. She's in a good place, Greg, and I was impressed with her at Ashburton. Um, it is going to be an awkward draw from there and she's going to need some luck at some stage of the race. So Mark Purden's thoughts around the couple of runners in the Neville R final. Here's our selections for the big one. I'm still going to go for True Fantasy, Michael. I think if the right one turns up, she's got the barrier draw to operate from and makes her very, very hard to beat. And you're hoping for a bit of luck early. Yep, it's happened before. Um, Chase the Dream came out of a size stakes in a similar draw a couple of years ago. It was in front 600 metres after they started. I think she punches through. I think she's racing well enough to win. Forget Ash Burton, start before she came from miles back in the field against most of these, and it was enormous. I'm not sure about True Fantasy. I'm not doubting Mark and Nat and Hayden. I just think the other filly's a better chance. All right, we've got a couple of other group races on the day. Your thoughts, Michael, around the Worthy Queen is uh, the favourite bolt for brilliance at a dollar ninety at the right price. Starts crucial. If he begins quickly, gets in the pack, yes, he probably wins because it'll improve on Kai Kura. Otherwise, if they string out Greg over two thousand metres standing start, the Metaderoses and the Midnight Dashes come into play. Tricky, tricky race. Two thousand metre standing starts aren't my betting. Um, wheelhouse, Gregory. What about uh, the junior free-for-all? I'm massive on Republican Party. I reckon he'll go forward, get the lead. He doesn't have to stay there. Blair Orange thinks he's a superstar. I think he can win that. What about you? I agree. I think they're getting 2.5 because there's so much speed inside him and he's not guaranteed to get the lead. But I agree with you. He has other ways of winning the race too. And he's comparable at the stage to a cooter. You put a cooter in this race, He's a dollar forty, dollar fifty. So yeah, clear top pick, and I think a lot of people will be tempted to run him through their multis. All right, we've got a couple of other special guests to give you their insights into the IRT New Zealand Cup. A two-time winning trainer, of course, he trained the mighty Monkey King. Will be part of the parade of champions uh, on uh, Tuesday after race number six. They will have Terra to Love, and of course Lazarus as well. Here's Benny Hill's thoughts on this year's cup. Here going, guys. I think it's an uh, interesting cup field. I think it's got some depth to it. I think um, there's about six or seven chances. I think it's great that the Aussies are over. Um, they've just got a step like everybody else. And um, I thought Rock and Roll there was pretty good the other day. Um, I like um, Old Town Road, the way he um, ran on at Ashburton the other day. I think he basically gave the wind burn. With him, with a sit, he'll be very potent. He can drop the bit, relax, and see the two miles out. So there's a lot going on this year. I thought Kango was very good the other day. If you put it, if you ask me one, it would be copy that. But I think he'd be a four dollar fifty favourite. Definitely not a certainty. Uh, good luck to the I do hope everybody steps and get him, gets away cleanly, which makes it um, a very good race. So uh, good luck, everyone. Hello, Gregory. Hello, Michael. Great to be joining you again on um, oh, what's the name of the show? Oh, yeah, the box seat. Um, bring back some good memories. But it's uh, good to be joining you for a look at a cup tip and the copy that was so good winning off 55 metres at Auckland last time. And as long as it's a proper stand start, unlike a couple of years ago where they needed some starting gates like they have here at Sha Tin, I'm sure the Hong Kong Jockey Club would be happy to lend some to the guys at Addington. Went through the field, I couldn't find a super happy win prawn or anything like that. So we'll just go with copy that off the 55 metres. And just before I go, just a shout out to a couple of people who'll be having absolutely nothing to do with the Cup on Tuesday. That's Matthew Williamson and the King of Kakura, Bob Rockford. 
Yeah, great to hear from Mark Mack there, although he's an idiot. We know that. And, he's an idiot. Uh, he yep, hasn't grown copy up that won't all. be starting off 55 metres, as we know, Michael. Mm. <laughs> really? Do, do we need... <laughs> let's can't, just, we just, can't we just forget about Mark? <laughs> yes. Let's just move on to the best bets for us, uh, starting with, of course, our cancer, uh, Breast Cancer Foundation that we're putting bets on for. Here they are. Michael, on with Sinbad, around 350. You're with Don't Stop Dreaming. That multi comes back about 560. And Graham Hand's got $100 on streaming live top three at about 450 and copy that uh, to win the cup. Michael, we know at this time of year we always get hassled for tips on these types of days. So if you had the opportunity to text it out, which I'm I'm sure you will be several times. What will you be texting out? This will save me some time, Greg, because I'll get 20 text messages when I wake up on Tuesday morning. They'll be saying, what do you like today? Well, here it is. This is what we like today. Um, I don't actually have a brand avatar on my phone, by the way, but that's how I'd tackle it. Split bet masterly, love a port in the first. Resolve each way. Don't stop dreaming your multi-anchor and El Conqueror to win. And, of course... The bottom part there, there might be some different texts flying around after the race day, Gregory. Yeah, for sure. This is what I'll be texting out, so uh, you don't have to text me. Here it is. I love Sinbad in race number two. Big, big chance. Republican Party is a special horse. Sherlock's a top three, almost anchor for your multis. And here's Herbie is the best bet of the day and lines up in the box seat every Wednesday mobile. And I do not have any more tickets, so please stop texting me about that. Michael, it's always a great occasion. The 119th running of this great race and uh, all of the support carts so deep. There's, there's tremendous opportunities for the punters out there. Greg, I wrote it last week. I'll say it again. After two difficult years, this is the Cup and the Cup Day we deserve. I hope everybody enjoys it. We're looking forward to bringing you the reviews of what's going to be a staggering week next week. But um, to everybody out there, we're looking forward to seeing you at Eddington. Yeah, and to all of the connections who have a runner on Cup Day, it's the pinnacle for any owner and obviously to have a runner in the New Zealand Cup. I'm not going to wish you all the best of luck, but just no bad luck. And a big thank you to our stable of sponsors who have allowed us to continue with this programme. Michael and I will see you on Tuesday for the great race.